It's a beautiful breezy morning here on the Amalfi Coast and I would like to do a sketch for you of this view. There is on top a Saracen Tower used to watch out for the arrival of pirates. Then there is a medieval building a church called Santa Maria del Bando. Um, it sits hundreds of steps up from the town which is down here and we walked up there once and it was closed and it usually is closed they had some thefts so they have to keep it closed and then there are a couple of houses on the way up and in fact we've been told that if we want to visit the church we could just knock on the door of the second to last house ah we haven't gathered the courage to do that um, the way I'm going to do this, because my sketchbook is so small, is by using, I can't really show you like this, by using two sheets, see, vertically, because it is a vertical image. I did a light pencil sketch, and I'm going to go over it lightly with pen. I, um, I'm using a platinum ink pen which I love it's an old one and it's leaking all over the place but I'll use it nevertheless and then I'll come back to you so I changed my mind about doing this offline because um, I wanted to share something that I learned by trial and error and that is don't just go over what you did in pencil. Meaning, use it as a guide, but first of all, you don't want straight lines. Those are boring if you just keep them. Um, even see, I'm kind of skipping, which actually a fountain pen and a watercolor paper, paper, this is Arches, it's a sketchbook I made myself, and I like that it doesn't do so, like you'd have a hard time writing on this, because it's uh, ridged paper, it's cold press, so it's not rough, it's not especially um, rough, but I think writing on it would be tricky, and that's good, you want that, I think when you draw because if you're not doing a some kind of a photographic illustration or a scientific illustration some skipping is nice I think there's a gutter here also I want to have fun at every stage of the process and going over what you've already done is a bit repetitious and potentially boring. So I like the idea of having to make choices at every step. What am I going to go over and what I'm not going to go over. Um, like these the foliage is not really necessary. I'm just indicating where the main leaf masses are, but um, and I could and will likely before I leave do the same scene without pen. I like the look of a sketch done without pen, just watercolor. Why do I use pen then? Because it's so much faster and easier. Once you have your pen line, it doesn't really matter where your color goes. Um, the drawing is there, it's legible, it's clear what it is that you're painting, and you can be stopped at any time, which is often the case when you sketch. You can't really rely on a certain amount of time, even if you're lucky enough to travel with someone who is very patient and has other activities to do. Maybe a fellow sketcher would be fun. In my case, my husband loves to read and to write, and 
I haven't gotten into sketching yet. I have a sense that if he did, he'd quickly surpass me. I've seen some sketches he's done in college, and he's very talented. And it would be fun to both sketch. But regardless of your situation, even if you're alone, you never know when you're going to be stopped. So there's something very relaxing about having your pen uh, drawing done and then you can really continue at any time, anywhere, if you should be interrupted. So I'm almost done with this. One of the reasons I like this platinum ink fountain pen is that it dries very quickly. And it's a windy day, as you can probably hear, because the video amplifies that. And, um, and so I trust that it's dry. However, you can really ruin a sketch if you try to erase before the pen is completely dry. I hope you won't see any of that live here, but I don't exclude it. Um, especially, for example, if the pen has leaked a little bit more um, ink than usual, then that little blob will take longer to dry than you think. But here we seem to be safe. Some pens really take a lot longer than this. I think part of it is the line is so thin. And this, um, this um, platinum ink is completely waterproof. So I can go right in with my water and a little napkin. When I go to a restaurant and I don't use the napkin too much, I usually bring it home when I'm traveling. Not at home. At home I have all kinds of cloth um, ways. So I have two tins just in case. They're both my handmade watercolors. And I'm fighting with the wind here. And with space. Alright, let's do this. It's tricky to make sure you see what you have to see. All right. As always, we we'll start with the sky. It's a clear blue sky. I have a, one of my handmade watercolors that's called Sky, so I'm going to use that. It's kind of a cool blue. I'm going to add a little bit of my winter. And I use my travel brushes. I have three. This is a number 12. It's going to be way too big for most of this. I have a number six that I'm going to turn to next. And <coughs> I have a golden ochre that I'm going to use for the first layer of the Saracen Tower. These are part of the wall, but I want it grayed out a bit. So I'm gonna have to mix. I do have a gray. Let's try the gray for some of this wall, yeah. Even though I feel it as a gentle breeze, I know from experience that this is going to record as really loud, and I apologize for that. It's a perfect morning for a sketch, so I decided to go for it despite the despite the weather, which is actually gorgeous weather as weather, just not ideal 
for these purposes. And then I'm going to start with the foliage. Oh, you can see the... I only can look at the camera once in a while and I see you have a bit of sea in the background and the sea makes everything better. So I have simple green here. In a way, these bad conditions where I'm painting from afar and without really any stable holding. Sometimes that's better for sketches. It prevents, it makes looseness and in, in, inevitable. Because how can you not be loose if you're barely in control of your brush? Which doesn't sound good, I know, but So I'm kind of brushing in and trying to vary my greens. Green is notoriously a hard color to reproduce because the greens of nature are so varied. going to well, actually stick with this and do some shadow and for the shadow I'm putting some pink so this is a shadow side of the building shadows really help with dimension These are rounded here. And that other building here is not really white like the church. It's a little bit yellowy, so I'm using this color that I call earth, really any kind of ochre or sienna will do. And then the bottom one is actually yellowy, so I'm using a little bit of my dandelion, but mixed with the earth. A little bit of shadow here. Here, here, and I'm going to let this layer dry. I'm getting there. So I'm kind of bothered that I lost this blue here. Um, I'm gonna try and lift it. It's an ochre, so it should lift. But it's not, it's not. Oh well, a staining French ochre. Um, what I'll do is I'll use a blue that's a little bit darker and then I'm just going to match it around here. This is a blue that I called Champlain Blue. It fits with the Mediterranean sky as well. Um, now that I have the basics, I'm going to do some um, some detail work and I really like how in reality the despite the thickness of the foliage the branches of these 
trees of these pine trees really stand out so I'm gonna leave that then with some somewhat darker and grayer um, earth color I'm gonna add a little blue to some mixture of colors here That's, um, I'm going to define these were old old stone walls so they're very irregular shape as is this tower I want to give a sense of the roundness of the tower but it's not easy on a quick sketch but I'll go over it once more I think if we make it a little bit darker here I give a sense of depth I'm kind of jumping around mostly to allow things to dry because even though everything became a bit of a mess earlier now I want a little bit more definition so a little bit of gray here for those shadows and that same earth color because even though you can't see them so well these are tiles up here for the roof I like to use the same colors in different parts of the sketch or painting it gives a sense of unity I'm going to go for my deep ultramarine mixed with a little bit of this I call it foliage it's, so I'll make a dark dark and the dark dark is good for these and this the door is actually quite light but I'm going to make it dark at least partly these two windows are dark dark let's see it looks nice to have some dark darks um, I want to make that a little bit grayer that dark dark make it a little bit grayer right now it's quite blue and I'll use it for the shadows here this is also a darker shadow Kind of purplish. The wind is back. Now, the moment that I've been procrastinating. Once in a while the wind blows and I imagine how it must sound because it doesn't sound too bad here but I know 
but it sounds really bad on the recording. And I apologize for that. I wanted a little bit of um, yellow in this greenery because it's a little bit sunstruck. That said, greens are something I really want to work on. I'm not happy with my greens. And that's why I delayed it. Which doesn't really help anyone, but... Because you got to do it at some point. So these rocks are actually... I'll regret putting so much color in it. because they're quite bright. All right, now my greens are a mess because it's what's left on the palette. These handmade watercolors are lovely in very many ways, but because they're mineral based they're not as transparent and so going with too many layers doesn't it's not the best way of using them so you see you have this beautiful green I should just leave it alone Maybe put a little yellow on it for variety, but they granulate and and um, shade around by themselves in beautiful ways. And going over more than twice is just not advisable. So I'm gonna better define this. And this roof, and this roof. Shadows here. And here. And I'm going to stop before I mess it up. So this is my double sketch with a double spread and unfortunately if I put it in the same place the lighting is not right so this is a sketch and you see the light here with the mountain in the background and the sea and this is a scene and I'm very grateful to you for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Bye.